What would happen if there was a boat floating on the surface of the liquid right when it turns supercritical? What happens to the boat? Does it just stay right where it was floating before? Or would it now float to the top since the whole tank is now filled? Or would it sink to the bottom because there's no layer of liquid to float on? So we're gonna fill up a egg of water. And then we're gonna dab up the egg in there. Let's see what happens. Then we're gonna fill up a with water, but put salt in there and mix it. As you can see, it floats. Put a lot of salt in there. Put water up in there. Yeah, a bit more than half full or half full in the salt water. As you can see, it floats. Now we're gonna get fresh water and put on top of it. Let's see what happens. You see egg floating in the middle. Tell me why. Why is that happen? This one floating on top, this one down, and this one floating in the middle. Here's, here's a fun question for Riley. What's denser, an egg or water? If all that matters is relative density, then the egg should sink. Funny you should ask that question. Today's video, we'll be doing a little bit of science and we will be observing how we can manipulate the medium by changing the density and create a force. Newton said, where there is an acceleration, a force must be present. quality between the density uh, of the egg equal to the density of the medium it's in. But what Nora says is, he equates cause with that which one manipulates. Well, your independent variable is the variable that is manipulated by the researcher in an experiment. It is the presumed cause. Stop. Uh, the reason he's talking about this is again is because uh, they hasn't mentioned it here, but I think in this experiment, this video, they actually poured the salt in. So I think he's claiming you can change the density of the medium, and therefore that is the cause or his independent variable is how much salt you poured in. He hasn't mentioned this, of course, but I think that's actually what he's trying to get at. I mean, I know it seems insane what he's saying here about you, you've got the you have the control of the density, and he's but he actually means that that's because he's been pouring salt into it or not. Yeah, exactly. You obviously do have the control over the density, but where's the connection from that to density is a force? Yeah, I mean, just does in the chat. Hey, Dal, check here. Look, look, I'm going to quickly debunk you in 10 seconds. You know what that's called? Unbalanced force. No acceleration required. You're welcome. Literally, that's relative density to equilibrium and debunks your whole argument. You require an acceleration. I didn't have acceleration now. I had an unbalanced force. Thank you very much. Because what happens is the object is unbalanced with the air around it, the medium around it. That's mm -hmm. why we have densities. Not because you have acceleration. It's because it's unbalanced force. Now, when you drop something like a water bottle with everything inside the water bottle, it's explained to you. It drops at the same rate. So it all has the same net force of same vector, same amount of force, it wouldn't separate. I can't help but you're just too ignorant to understand this. There's a exactly. no correlation there. Exactly. It's just gone off wildly into this quantum eraser dogmatic dogma land where they prefer to live about independent dependent variables and say so it's just trying to prove forces because there's an effect as a result of changing the independent variable, i.e. the thing that is the cause in his mind. Although, of course, he doesn't like the idea of any cause has more than one factor because, of course, you've got the density of the... Um, the, the the liquid you've got the force of gravity in other words there are multiple factors and he can't cope with that like nathan doesn't understand that an effect is the result of more than one or one more one more than one factor and yeah, so he, loved the idea he doesn't just... understand that an equation can contain more than two uh, factors yeah. yes more than one factor no they're, well, they're... yeah more than one factor actually yeah. yeah yeah exactly right so we've got his words we'll come back to them in a minute it's clear that we need a definition or two for the rumpus. Let's not cherry pick one. Let's go with, say, 10. And let's see if there's a common theme for what is an independent variable. We're looking for what it is and the effect that it has on an experiment. Let's see whether his words were correct. From Colorado Science and Engineering Fair, the independent variable is the variable which an experimenter deliberately manipulates in an experiment. From Penn State University, 
there should be three types of variables in every experiment. The dependent, independent and the controlled. The independent variable is what is varied during the experiment. It is what the investigator thinks will affect the dependent variable. From Explorable.com The independent variable. This is what you change in order to provide a result. The dependent variable. This is what you are measuring. From award-winning awardco.com, an independent variable is the variable that is changed or controlled in a scientific experiment to test the effects on the dependent variable. From the University of North Carolina, in an experiment, the independent variable is the variable that is varied or manipulated by the researcher and the dependent variable is the response that is measured. An independent variable is the presumed cause, and the dependent variable is the presumed effect. In experiments, the independent variable is the variable that is controlled and manipulated by the experimenter, whereas the dependent variable is not manipulated. Instead, the dependent variable is observed or measured for variation as a presumed result of the variation in the independent variable. According to the GCSC citation in experiments, variables are used to help determine the cause and the effect. An independent variable can be thought of as the cause of change. A dependent variable is what is affected by the independent variable. There can only be one independent variable and one dependent variable in an experiment. Everything else that can impact the experiment must be kept constant or controlled. These are known as controls. The independent variable is controlled by you. In other words, you can manipulate the independent variable during an experiment to discover what effect it has on the other variables. This is the cause. From practicalphysics.org, that's the Institute of Physics. The independent variable is the variable that is deliberately changed by the experimenter. The dependent variable an outcome variable that is measured each time the independent variable is changed. From the University of Southern California, the dependent variable is the presumed effect. The independent variable is systematically manipulated by the investigator. It is the presumed cause. From Indiana University, independent variables are felt to cause some change in the dependent variables. They are manipulated by the researcher. Dependent variables are felt to be affected by independent variables. They are measured by the experimenter and are normally responses of the subjects. By sciencing.com, the independent variable is the variable that the scientist changes during the experiment. Think of the experiment as a cause and effect exercise. The independent variable is the cause factor. This is an egg. This is a parts per million counter. Inspired by Jaron's most recent video, if you haven't checked it out, go to his channel and it's called something like How and Why I Drink Distilled Water. Um, he used one of these and he measured the amount of particulates per million in his tap water. I decided that I could apply what he used, this little bit of technology, not science, this is technology. I could apply this technology and I could perform a practical scientific experiment where I could measure the density of a medium, in this case water, and I can make this egg move all by itself with just a little bit of salt. I can observe my phenomena to be that some objects appear to float, some objects appear to sink, some objects will suspend in different mediums. My hypothesis is if I change the medium's density, the egg will move. Newton said, if an object moves, a force is present. My null hypothesis is that if I change the, if I change the density of the medium, the egg will not move. I will activate one of the hypotheses. My independent variable, my presumed cause that I must manipulate in an experiment, is the density of the medium. My dependent variable is the movement of the egg. I'll also try and keep everything else constant. 
the volumes of water, not enough change, just the density of the medium. What I'm now going to try and prove is that if I change the density of the medium, I will cause the, the uh, effect by adding salt. So if I can change it, because I'm manipulating, I'm the experimenter and I'm manipulating my presumed cause, my independent variable is the medium, if that egg moves, I've caused it. We know the parts per million is about 300. All we need to do is pour some of this in. Hey, what do you know? The egg's immediately moved. Didn't have to wait for that, did we? So, what's the explanation? Scientific method states that the independent variable is the presumed cause, and I presumed that changing the density of the liquid would, with salt would cause a displacement. Newton's first law of motion states that um, f f every object will remain at rest unless acted upon by a force, and I've obviously created a force. The density of the medium has displaced the egg. The egg moved. That's an accelerating mass. So therefore, Newton states that there is a force. I caused it with this. So in scientific, in scientific method, the cause of the displacement is this. I've caused it. I've manipulated it. I added the salt. It caused something. Well, today I'm going to be testing this out by actually floating a small styrofoam boat in liquid CO2 and then heating it to its supercritical point. It is floating. Okay, now I'm heating it up. See if we can get to supercritical pressure here. The styrofoam is dipping deeper down in it now. The line's disappearing. Whoa, and it's kind of rising up above the surface of the styrofoam. Oh, the styrofoam sunk. It sunk down in the liquid. But now I can no longer see a meniscus on top. You can't really tell where the gas and the liquid separate from each other. Great, what did we just observe? We observed relative density, disequilibrium, full on display. What happened when he had uh, increased the temperature of the medium? It became critical and therefore the density had changed enough for the styrofoam to sink. So the displacement had been the driving force for the movement. The unbalanced force had been attributed by the object through the medium. This proves without a doubt mass does not attract mass, therefore the mass does not give rise to a force, but it's an unbalanced force due to the object ratio of its density to the medium. That proves without a doubt relative density disequilibrium is the real deal and gravity is just a farce. Till next time, God bless.